Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome today. Uh, we're going to be doing a mod showcase, something a little bit different. This is going to be overviewing the mod Requiem Marina, made by Pampazek on the Nexus mods, uh, also known as Babel. Apologize if I uh, mispronounced the name. And th what this mod is, is essentially a testing ground for Requiem players. It allows you to fully customize your builds, um, try out different types of weapons, gear, armor, and then test fight against a variety of different bosses within the game of Skyrim and Requiem. So we're going to get right into it. Now you do need Requiem 5.0 and the Forzard Dragonborn patch for it. You're going to have to run this mod through the Rectificator. Once you've done so, or once you installed it through something like Mod Organizer 2, and you have Requiem installed, you run the Rectificator, then this mod is good to go and you can load it up. Now you can do it on existing saves, but I recommend doing it on a new save just so that you know you can use this mod to specifically try out different types of builds. You don't really want to use it on an existing save um, in case you know you end up consoling a bunch of OP gear into your inventory. So well, I don't know what this guy's doing over here. So yeah, oh, start a new game. Load it up, and when you get in, you're not going to be able to get into the arena unless you use console commands. So you do have to uh, enter the arena via the console command COC Requiem Arena. Make sure to do that because otherwise, there's not really any other way. You have to teleport inside. And once you're here, um, you can do a variety of things. So you could immediately go to this fountain and choose your destiny to select a pre made build. These are, I, I believe, up to level 30. Yeah, and so these will automatically level up your skills, your health, your stamina, uh, give you some ge base gear, as well as increase your level to 30 um, right off the bat. So if you want to try something out really quickly, you can go to that. You can go to standing stones here to change out your standing stone. And then over here are going to be the shrines to all the Adras, all the divines. We have unique items base weapons, base armors, these are peerless jewelry, you know, the highest tier um, enchanted jewelry for both the rings, the circlets, and the necklaces. And these are crafting attire, which you can use if you want to max out on, you know, crafting a potion or crafting uh, a weapon. We have spells and scrolls, which includes all of the spell tomes available. And we have uh, the enchanting and uh, alchemy section, which also has all your potions and your crafting ingredients for alchemy. We can learn all of our shouts here. Be wary. If you learn all the shouts, I'll show you right now. It's going to complete the main quest for you. So especially if you're using something like SXP, I mean, this would completely break your game if you were playing it on a character who is actually running through the game and not just testing things out. Again, we have all the crafting stations, we have an enchanting table, and an alchemy lab, and a forge over here, alongside the other things, as well as ingots, and I guess ore, and the crafting books, and other materials. And then over here, we actually have some of the passives that you can get from specific types of quests, like Ancient Amar and Tabella, see what's your pose. We have Lycanthropy for becoming a werewolf, Vampirism for becoming a vampire, Sindarian Serendipity, which is... I don't even know. It's for collecting all the Crimson Ninroot that I forget what it does. We have Ancient Knowledge, which again is another buff that you can get um, for smithing. And then we have the Augma Infinium, the most broken OP Daedric artifact in the game. And so that covers the stations and all of those things. Now, to actually test the builds out against enemies... Oh wait, hold on. Let's actually go over. So it does add a new menu to the MCM, Requiem Marina. So you can use this to manually level up skills rather than using cons command. You can give yourself extra perks for free. You can change your combat skills to whatever level you want. So let's say, for example, I want my destruction to 100 and I want my alteration to 100. Go to skills now and we're going to level up a bunch because we just leveled those skills up to 100. So we're level 40 now, and if we look at alteration, that's 100. Where's destruction? Destruction is also 100. So I'm just going to start leveling that up. I don't really care what I'm taking. Yeah, 
Then we're gonna take Master Destruction, and I'm gonna take- Oh, there's no Fire Strike. Son of a gun. I'll take Lightning Vortex. No, I'll take Firestorm. And I have 52 perks because I added myself uh, 30 perks just to see how it works, and it literally just gives you free perks, so that's pretty nice. Really good for testing out any variety of builds, especially if you have something like special feats, which is what I have for Requiem, which adds new perks. So special feats, I mean this is a little bit of a tangent, but special feats adds things like the meta magic perks here, which allow me to modify my spells to be stronger, or extend duration or range or whatever. Pretty nice. Amongst a lot of other things too this and we're gonna take master alteration and we're gonna take transcendence on self for a really nasty combo because if you don't know transcendence where's that spell transcendence allows us to become invincible now I have god mode toggled just for the showcase so my magic is infinite and my health is infinite and it doesn't really matter that I'm using Transcendence. But this is a really good combo late game. Combo Transcendence with any uh, master level spell that has a really long um, charging time for the ritual spell animation. Where's Firestorm? Right here. So now that we have that primed up, I can show you guys how to summon enemies. So you can see here we have a variety of humans spawned. And we can actually test this out right now. Let's uh, try it against someone who's not too strong. Galmar, perhaps. So if you want to summon an enemy, first of all, you have to click one of these. You have to select one of these. We selected humans. I just pressed E on it. If we press E on undead, then it shows us the undead options. We're going to go back to humans. Next, you select an NPC that you want to fight. And it's kind of hard to tell, but there is a light column above his head showing that we've selected this NPC and once you've done that then you can select the use get wreck skull thing over here and it'll spawn our friend and he's not really a friend but let's switch to a weapon Alright. Damn, he gives big XP. So as you can see there, that's a pretty easy way to spawn them in. Alright, we did a quick cut because I had to figure out some of the mechanics of the spawning. So real fast, if you want to test out other things such as NPCs versus NPCs, what we can do here is choose teams. Now what this is going to do is the first time you click it, it's going to spawn for the red team. Make sure that you have used this skull rib use fight button to close the arena doors on both sides otherwise they're going to just spill out and attack you so once we have the red team spawning in we're going to choose left side you can use this to spawn them and we're going to we're hopefully going to have the ebony warrior on this side we're going to spawn vigilant tyrannus Irolith, and galmar yep and i can see i can see them over there now we're going to spawn the blue side. So we're going to spawn Maroc. Well, that's not very fair. <laughs> Ancano, Orchindor, and Mercer Free. And then... Oh man, I'm kind of scared. I am actually really scared to see what happens. But uh, we're going to spawn them in. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. So... Now that we have both sides filled up with the enemies we want to see fight, we're going to use the use fight to open up the gates and let hell be unleashed. Or not. Okay, they're going in. Oh, they're running in.
So a full blown. Actually, let's just use toggle free cam. Let's take a look. Wow. I think Aerolith is just a frozen dead body right now. Oh, Rock is fighting on Kano. <laughs> Ooh, he got slain. Ebony Warrior. Oh my god. Ebony Warrior is doing work. I, I, you know, he might actually be tanky enough to sustain against Maroc. Oh, wow. The epic 1v1 right here. He is attacking really fast. Good lord. Okay, so it seems like Maroc and the Ebony Warrior can fight pretty much forever. Uh, so we're going to leave that and we're going to try out some other things. So something pretty nice. You know, you can use any of the builds that you're curious about how, you know, how strong they might be. Like, say, for example, you know, how strong is a Stealth Archer? How strong is a Two-Handed Warrior? How strong is a destruction mage you can try out those builds i made the mistake of summoning going to the b section where you just hear a ton of uh breathing all of these make a lot of noise except for the humans <laughs> okay um so we can test out a couple things mainly multi-spawning i suppose it's definitely helpful to have the team spawner if you want to keep them in one place and not just go all over the place so we're gonna go to undead i just want to spawn an army of draugr just to see if i can then i don't think we have access to the shouts we gotta get the shouts back So we're just going to pop on Unrelenting Force, maybe Fire Breath 2. Oh no, actually, I, I know what I wanted to try. Ah oh, shoot, I don't have the spells, I have to go get them back. So we want Fire Strike, no not Fire Strike, Fire Storm, I guess I'll take it too. And then we also want Transcendence, Transcendence on Self. And again, the combo is to use Transcendence on Stealth to gain invulnerability until your next action. And then, oh shoot, I have to summon them first. And then we use Firestorm when we're completely invincible. Now, obviously, I have like Toggle God mode, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, that didn't even kill them all. Oh, no. <laughs> it's very interesting how shouts actually increase in size the further they travel. Like, look, I just hit everyone there. Let's switch to Fire Breath. So if you were ever to get a, a max CDR shout cooldown build, it would look like that. Very disgusting and very fun. Um, and then if you had max destruction and alteration, you could do the transcendence with the firestorm. Unfortunately, it didn't do a lot of damage there because my uh, destructions reset back down to like five. But yeah, so overall, this is just a fantastic tool to test out skills, abilities, weapons, any of the like of that. Um, and also fight a lot of the bosses, such as, you know, Maroc or Ebony Warrior. 
Uh, I don't see an option for dragons. We have slighted, which is pretty nice. We have the dragon priest, which is also pretty nice. If you want to like fight more, okay. Where is he? He's over here. Uh, we can fight the forge master, I think. Yep. Man, he looks really shiny. And then for beasts, you can fight all the named unique beast bosses. Ragnarok is a pretty strong one. Cruel. I don't know why this one's empty. But yeah, so that's a pretty amazing tool. And I don't think there's dragons, but you could console command in dragons if you wanted to fight them. This would be a great enclosed environment to fight dragons and also test out, you know, like Dragon Bane or whatever build you want to try out to see how strong it is against dragons since that's a pretty key capstone late game enemy uh, i mean i say late game but like I, I fight dragons at like 15 level 20 just because it really helps you get your build off the ground once you have shouts um so yeah great mod uh you guys should check it out i'll leave links in the description below and again you do need requiem 5.0 um to install this mod because you have to run it through rectificator uh, but other than that Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.